Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the prophet Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and his wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousands served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the ancient one and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in praying Psalm 93 responsively by half verse. The Lord is king. He has put on splendid apparel. The Lord has put on his apparel and girded himself with strength. He has made the whole world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. The waters have lifted up, O Lord, the waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. 
mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea. Your testimonies are very sure. And holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. A reading from the book of Revelation. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord.
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Here we are, once again, at the end of our church liturgical year with a Good Friday Gospel the week before Advent. I don't want to talk about Good Friday. We're awaiting the first Sunday of Advent and the hope for the new life that comes with it. And appropriately, I guess, nearing the end of the dying year, we are reminded of death. One earthly year dies and the new year is born. One person dies and a baby is born. It's the circle of creation around and around, year after year, until the end of time. But instead of just being about death, as in Jesus' confrontation with Pilate and his imminent crucifixion in today's gospel, there's also so much hope in all of the readings. There's confidence and faith in the power of God. There's such a vivid picture of the kingdom of God. There's a vivid reminder of our hope and belief in what we pray each Sunday in the Eucharist. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. That's the circle of our belief within the circle of creation. And there's also a vivid reminder today that we belong only to God and nobody else. God is our beginning and our ending. He is also our very, be our very being. The reading from Revelation says, God is the Alpha and the Omega who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. From A to Z, from the beginning to the end and back to the beginning, God through Christ has brought all of us into his kingdom. Only one God, only one kingdom. Rephrased, we can imagine God saying, I was, I still am, and in the future, I will be. God is eternal. He was before time began, he is now, and he will be when time ends. God, through Isaiah, said, You who have been born by me from your birth, carried from the womb, even to your old age, I am he. Even when you turn gray, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear, I will carry and will save. That's real comfort. God has made Christ the ruler of the kings of the earth eternally. His kingdom isn't defined by earthly terms, though, but neither is it some far out concept. It's really quite simple. Jesus comes from and belongs to God's kingdom, and so do we. Jesus' kingship is about proclaiming the truth and belonging to the truth. And as we are servants of Christ the King, we also belong to the truth. In the letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, Paul writes, He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. I don't really recollect any earthly human power being able to promise that. Paul also says, For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile himself to all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. We have been rescued, redeemed, forgiven through the power of Christ and his resurrection. God will never desert us, he promised. He has given us life in his kingdom through Jesus Christ, period. God's most fervent wish is stated in today's collect Almighty and ever-living God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule. We are divided in many ways. It seems like the thirst for power over others is mushrooming, we live in a divided world in very uncertain times on what seems like every level. Fear and hatred abound. 
wars, famine, disease, seemingly everywhere. It's extremely hard to know who to trust or what to believe. And we are enslaved by sin. Review the definition of sin in our own catechism. Sin is the seeking of our own will instead of the will of God, thus distorting our relationship with God, with other people, and with all creation. Very simply, the will of God for us is that we are faithful to him, that we love justice and are merciful and walk humbly with him, that we walk in truth, that we live in God's kingdom. How might we act or think differently if we utterly understood that through God, only Jesus is the power of powers? Are we truly aware of to what and to whom we look for power? Who or what has power over you? The power to tell you who you are. By what or whom do you measure your value or success? Who or what do you let shape your moods and your mind, influence your decisions, tell you whether you are safe or unsafe? Who helps you discern what is important and what is not? The essential question is, what or whom shapes your own circle of life from birth to death? Who do you believe is king over you? What kind of power does Christ our King have? Not the power to save himself from death, but the power to forgive. Not what we humans consider power, but the power of the servant of all, the power to heal, the power to love justice and show mercy to all. God's power is love. God's power is protection and presence. God's power is the power of redemption and forgiveness. Through Jesus, the one who gave of himself to the poor, the marginalized, the downtrodden, the beggars, the lepers, and on and on, that is who rules as king in God's kingdom here on earth. Our kingdom here on earth. There's a quote from the French philosopher Blaise Pascal about power. He says, justice and power must be brought together so that whatever is just may be powerful, and whatever is powerful may be just. It's my belief that justice does not rain down from the secular powers at the top. It lives in the seeds of power planted in us all by God and grows out of our acts of love and compassion. We are required to live as Jesus lived, as our servant king, by showing justice and mercy to all, but we're human. And as humans, we tend to give power over us to all sorts of things that aren't necessarily good for us. So it's quiz time. Remember those seven deadly sins? Father Eric had an acronym for those. Remember pale gas? Let's hear it. Lust, envy, sloth. But there's an antidote to those seven deadly sins, however. And those are the seven heavenly virtues that counter them. Sadly, I cannot produce an acronym for those as they all begin with a consonant, which is usually what happens when I play Scrabble. But anyway. <laughs> But you can write these down in your sermon notes and keep them handy. You ready? Humility, which is characterized by a modest attitude, a willingness to serve others, and a recognition of our own limitations and dependence on God. Charity, back to that agape love of last week, the love of God and our neighbor, selfless and unconditional. Chastity the quality of being morally pure, of having personal integrity in all things. Temperance, self-control of our words, our actions, and our emotions. Patience, that's a hard one. It's the ability to remain calm in demanding and trying situations, 
maintaining peace within and without, diligence, steadfastness in our life and work, an essential part of growing in faith and character, and last but not least, kindness, treating each other always with mercy, compassion, and forgiveness. We are at the end of the year, and I have just left us with seven New Year's resolutions. Just as virtue conquers sin, after darkness comes light. After the crucifixion comes the resurrection. After loss comes hope. The wheel of creation turns again. The days grow longer and a season of hope and renewal springs. We can now pray with Isaiah, shower, O heavens from above, and let the skies rain down righteousness. Let the earth open that salvation may spring up and let it cause righteousness to sprout up also. I, the Lord, have created it. So pray. Pray that salvation and righteousness have those seeds of God's power in us sprouting up. Get ready to feel the anticipation of new life in the birth of Jesus. Get ready to welcome a season of peace and unity. Celebrate the renewed power of Jesus in our lives, our only King, our Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Amen. Let us stand together and declare what we believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Ruth Carver. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, 
ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk, walk in, in your ways to, to the, the glory, glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us exchange a sign of peace with one another. As you are finding your seats, there's several announcements I want to draw your attention to. Uh, first of all, good morning, St. Phillips. If you're visiting, welcome. If you have any questions or, or would like to talk with one of us, Deacon Pam will be at one door and I'll be at the other following the service. You have the green announcement sheet which tells you just about everything that's happening this week with the exception of this is Thanksgiving week. The office is closing at noon following the noonday service on Wednesday, and then will remain closed for Thanksgiving Day as well, and then it reverts to normal hours after that. There is coffee hour today. I wanted to remember to say that. There is coffee hour today. You may have received one of these. Were these in your bulletins? Okay. This is for Christmas flowers, if you would like to make an offering towards Christmas flowers, you can fill out this sheet and you can make it in honor of something, in thanksgiving for something, in memorial for something, and then that will be included, I believe, in the Christmas bulletin. Is that right, Lorraine? Yes, it will be. So prayers will be offered in, in, uh, in, those, in those cases. The annual meeting is on Advent 2, the second Sunday of Advent. Next Sunday is Advent 1, the first day of the new church year, Advent 1. So in two Sundays from now, there's one service. It's at 9 o'clock, followed by the annual meeting. The annual meeting, we will elect vestry, we'll review the budget, present the budget to you all, and we will also elect diocesan convention delegates for our parish. Those delegates will very likely be voting for the new bishop if everything goes as they are projecting next year. So it will be an important, uh, an important election for our delegates, that is. Of course, the bishop's election will be important as well, but that's a little further down the road. Uh, I think I covered everything except for I need to offer a blessing for the prayer shawls. Deacon Pam, if you would like to speak to that for a moment. These prayer shawls are made with great love by the prayer shawl ministry here at St. Philip's, and they are made in the fashion of the ancient Jewish prayer shawls. And I'm going to read you what the card says that goes out with them. This prayer shawl was made for you by the prayer shawl ministry at St. Philip's Episcopal Church, Southport. It has been blessed in our church. As it was created, we ask the Lord to give you many blessings, comfort, hope, and peace. May you be wrapped in God's love. And they will be on the new rack in the narthex, if you haven't noticed that. And they are free to, free to the taker for somebody, for either yourself or somebody that you know who is in pain or needs comfort or is suffering. They are there to be used for that reason. Thank you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are to receive these prayer shawls. As they place these shawls about their being, may they be warmed by our prayers, by your love, by the presence of the Holy Spirit, and by the communion 
of the saints. And now we ask your blessing upon these shawls that they may be set apart for the work for which they have been created in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have a ministry in focus. Evan is coming forward to speak to us. Good morning. Last week, Father Eric talked to us about agape love, and I interpreted that as seeing some need and doing it without being asked to do it for the benefit of somebody else. We have an opportunity to show agape love. We now have the angel tree out in the narthex, and it has 85 needs on that tree. That's 85 children that we can help have a better Christmas if we participate in agape love. The information on how to do it or what you need to know is in the bulletin, so I hope that you'll take the bulletin home. But basically, one, the presents, please take the price tags off, wrap the presents, bring them back to the church by December 11th. And if you have multiple presents for one family or one person, please attach those together by a ribbon or something so that we know. Also, very important, the angel that you take off the tree must be attached to the presence so we know who it goes to. We're working with three different groups, so we have to take these presents to really three different places. They're due back December 11th because that's when the middle school, the Brunswick Middle School, closes on that Friday. This gives us a day to separate them from the others and get them up to the school so that they can deliver them on Thursday and Friday. So I hope that you'll participate. The tree's out there. If you need any, have any questions, please see me. But let's help 85 children have a better Christmas. Thank you. Thank you, Evan. So this Thursday is Thanksgiving, and we do not offer a service on Thanksgiving because everybody's busy doing something, getting ready for Thanksgiving, whether they're visiting people or people are visiting them or you're busy cooking. So in that light, I ask you to reach in front of you and grab a red book of common prayer and turn to page 837. And together we're going to pray. I'll lead you in the prayers, a litany of Thanksgiving. Page 800. And 37. Let us give thanks to God our Father for all his gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ. We thank you, Lord. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families, and our friends. We thank you, Lord. For minds to think, and hearts to love, and hands to serve. We thank you, Lord. For health and strength to work, and leisure to rest and play. For the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity. We thank you, Lord. For all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice. We thank you, Lord. For the communion of saints in all times and in all places. We thank you, Lord. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. Him. Be praised and glory with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts. They may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>